I'm interested tonight in seeing this, in seeing Christ unveiling amidst the church, Christ unveiling uh, amidst the church. And so I'm looking forward to uh, uh, to uh, looking into this and seeing uh, what uh, what the Lord uh, is going to teach us from this here. Uh, we've we've witnessed Christ the Lamb, and so now we can expect Christ the Lion, and the Lion, of course, uh, being the King, uh, and the Lord is going to sit one day on a literal kingdom. I have seen folks, um, uh, false prophets, uh, make the statement in this day uh, that uh, the Lord's kingdom is already on earth, and that's not true. Uh, then I've seen them talk about that that uh, uh, that it's a spiritual kingdom. And uh, so if it's a spiritual kingdom or the kingdom, uh, you know, there's not going to be. No, Brother Matthew, Revelation chapter number one, verse number 10. Revelation chapter number one, verse number 10. I'm interested in knowing uh, just whose heart the kingdom's in. If there's just, he said he's going to sit on one throne. And so anyhow, we'll talk about that later on. But I'm looking, uh, I'm interested in seeing Christ's unveiling amidst the church. And so let's look up. Uh, we see here, of course, we've already mentioned that uh, we witnessed him as Christ the Lamb, the Lamb of God. And now we can expect to see him as the Lion. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18, the Bible tells us here, of course, uh, where we're at here is Jesus Christ has been crucified. And he's being seen here now after his resurrection. Uh, the book of 1 Corinthians tells us that he was seen of upward of 500. Uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, he was seen of, of, uh, of his 12 disciples. He was seen of upward of 500 brethren. And so we know that he was um, he was uh, witnessed uh, after his resurrection. That's where we're at here, Matthew 28, verse 18. The Bible said, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Uh, and we see him now as the judge amidst the churches as the judge amidst the churches. And so while you think about that, let's go over to Revelation chapter number one, Revelation chapter number one, verse number 10. And uh, the Bible said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Verse 12, the Bible said, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst, the, uh, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of, of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the pants with a golden girdle. His head and his hair, uh, his head and his hair uh, were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they had been burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Verse 17, the Bible said, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and, it, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth, and he that was uh, and and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou saw, uh, which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. So we see here uh, that he begins to instruct John. John said he's in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he's began to give instruction to John about uh, who he is. He says, uh, saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, what thou seest right in a book. And so having heard that from this voice, 
the Bible said that John began to turn around and what we're going to talk about is what was unveiled to John that he was instructed to write about. And so we'll see many things were unveiled. Uh, but what we know is this, uh, uh, these messages uh, uh, to the churches as we begin to see this image are the first of many judgments that will uh, that'll be seen or can be seen in the book of Revelation. And so what we know is that if we... Uh, uh, if we study uh, these, uh, what the Lord saw in his unveiling, uh, then we can learn what pleases Christ. Uh, uh, if we study this unveiling, uh, what pleases him about uh, uh, the, what the church does. And so I want to study a little bit tonight on Christ unveiling amidst the churches. Christ unveiling amidst the churches. And so I want to talk about three ways that we see him or three judgments of uh, the, uh, three different types of of judge that we can see him as. Listen, help me pray for me tonight. My my mind is a little bit scrambled. I got so many notes. Of, I'm not sure we'll be able to get to all of them, but what I want to do is get to what the Lord wants us to get to and uh, see him as he wants us to see. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. God, we thank you for an opportunity, Lord, to be gathered around the, the Bible tonight. God, I thank you for families, Lord, that love you enough. God, to gather their families up and open their Bible, Lord, and gather around it on a Wednesday night. And even though they've got to sit in front of a television set or a or a, or a phone, uh, uh, Lord, to uh, to see the uh, the teaching of the Word of God. And so I pray now tonight, God, that this would not be a time that's spent in vain, but I pray, God, that you'd give me clarity of thought, God. Lord, you know, I've uh, tried to do my best to be studious about this, uh, about this lesson, God, and to seek you. Now I pray now, God, that you'd help me, Lord. If there be any motive in me, God, that's impure, I pray, God, that you'd forgive me of that. And I pray uh, that you'd help me, God, that my motives might be right. That, Lord, that uh, my motives might be to see uh, folks take the word of God and, and for us to learn it together, that we might grow into what you'd have us to be. I pray now, God, you'd empower us, Lord, to, uh, to both uh, preach and to receive the word of God. Lord, that we might be made different. God, that we might be made... Uh, uh, into that which will bring honor and glory to you. I pray out, God, that you reveal ourselves, uh, uh, yourself unto us. Uh, uh, God, as you reveal our heart unto us, God, that we might become, uh, Lord, uh, uh, profitable in your sight and in your service. I pray now, God, that you'd help us, Lord, to uh, uh, Lord, to see you and to learn about you in such a way that pleases you. God, that we might share it to the rest or the rest of the world. Help us, we do pray. In Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Now, listen, let's look here at the Bible. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verse number 13. And so what I want to look at first is what I see here. I see him as the pure judge. I see him as the pure judge. And what we'll talk about here is his garment and his girdle and his head of hair. And so what we see here is the Bible begins to talk about his garment. And it says he was clothed with a garment down to his foot. Now, listen, we began to think about him being clothed with a garment down to his foot. And we can think about this, and it's uh, uh, directly the opposite of what we find in the failure of man's sin. Listen, they were in the garden. They were naked. And listen, when they uh, partook of the fruit, uh, the Bible talks about that their, uh, their eyes were open. They began to see the difference between good and evil. And they sewed fig leaves together. And what we know is that uh, uh, what we know is that Jesus came on the scene uh, and they hid themselves even in their fig leaves to, uh, to hide their nakedness from the Lord. And the Bible talk teaches us that the first uh, I mentioned of the shedding of blood there and to cover man's sin was when the Lord made for them coats of skin uh, to cover their nakedness. And so we see here the holiness of the purity of our Savior I'm being revealed in the fact that the Bible teaches us I mean, he had a garment on that went down to his feet. It was a covering. It shows us his purity, his holiness. Listen, Daniel chapter 7, verse number 9. The Bible said, And I beheld until the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool, and his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Listen, I'm telling you that the Bible is showing us here that we have 
a pure Savior. We see in his garment his, his purity and his holiness. And then we can look on and we can see uh, his girdle. The Bible said in verse number one and also uh, uh, verse uh, chapter number one and also verse number 13. It said he was girded about the paps uh, with a golden girdle. He was girded about the paps uh, with the golden girdle. Now I'll say this. We can go to Daniel chapter 10 uh, and verse number five. And we can find some information also about this girdle. And the Bible said this, it said, Then I lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girt about with fine gold of Euphaz. Verse number six, the Bible said, And his body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of light, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like unto a lichen color, unto polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And so now let's look here. Now there's a difference we find in Daniel chapter 10 and uh, and uh, Revelation chapter number 1 verse 13. I want you to notice the difference in Daniel chapter number 10. How that fine golden girdle is about his loins. I mean in Revelation chapter 1 verse number 13. How that golden girdle the Bible said is about his paps or his chest. Listen there's a difference there in the fact that when the girdle is about the loins, it portrays a position of service. But when that girdle is about the paps, what we find is this, and that, that represents a priestly judge. Now listen, I'm telling you this, that we saw the Lord Jesus Christ come into the world, and he became a servant. He became lowly in the sight of men. We know that he became the Lamb of God, and that he was slain for my sin and for yours. And what we know is this, how that where we see him now at is not in that position of the lamb, but it's in a position, if you will, of a lion. It's that priestly judge. And the Bible teaches us that he's walking amidst of the churches of the churches here, and he's walking amidst the churches in this day. And we know that what he's doing as that he's judging the works of the church, he's judging the works of his servants, and he's looking on what we're doing. And I just wonder tonight if we can see that his judgment is pure. His judgment is pure. Listen, you talk about uh, his garment and his girdle. And what we see is his judgment is pure. Listen, he's wearing this uh, how this uh, garment down to his foot. It shows us his purity and his holiness. Then we see this, uh, I listen, this golden girdle. Uh, but I want you to also notice about this golden girdle. And we see a little more insight, Daniel. Uh, Daniel chapter number 10, verse number 5. And the Bible said, Whose loins uh, were girded with uh, fine, were girded with fine gold. His garment was girded. Uh, he was girded with uh, uh, about the loins with a girdle with fine gold of Euphaz. Now, if you study the gold of Euphaz, you'll find out uh, how it is some purest. It's a notice of being a, the purest of gold. Listen, they say that that gold was so pure how that it was almost red. And I'm telling you how that his judgment is pure. We not only see that his judgment is pure uh, in his garment, his girdle, uh, but we see his judgment is pure uh, in his head and his hair. In his head and his hair. Revelation chapter one, verse number fourteen. The Bible said his. Uh, the Bible said this. Uh, I said his head and his hair were white like wool, uh, as white as snow. Listen, his hair uh, were white like wool and as white as snow. Isaiah chapter one, verse number t uh, eighteen. And the Bible said, "Come now and let us reason together," saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Listen, 
listen, I'm telling you this, we see in the Bible, a picture of purity. I'm telling you, friend, uh, hey, we may be a, uh, uh, we may be a, uh, a scarlet sinner. I'm of the Lord will clean us up, make us white. Uh, listen, we find that when reference is made in the Bible unto uh, wool, it's always, uh, I'm talking about it in a, uh, the purest of white form. And so what we see here, Daniel chapter number seven, verse number nine, the Bible talks about the head of his hair. It is said in the hair of his head like pure wool. What we see here is a picture of unblemished purity as our head. We see that he's clothed I'm down to his foot and his garment. And that's a picture of holiness and purity. We see, listen, how that he's girt about his pants or his chest with this fine golden girdle. And he's there in that place of judgment. And he's got his hair is as white as wool. Listen, I'm telling you, there's nothing any more pure than the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything about him is pure. And I'm telling you tonight that he is a pure judge. He is a pure judge. We can see in his garment and his girdle and his head and his hair that he is a pure judge. I see him as the pure judge. Listen, Colossians chapter 1, verse number 15. The Bible said, who is the image of the invisible God of the firstborn of every creature, and for by him were all things created that are uh, in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Verse 17, the Bible said, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is all things, uh, that, that in all things uh, he might have preeminence. I'm telling you, he's judging us uh, in his pure judgment uh, and to help us to see uh, how that he is to be our head uh, and that in him, uh, he might he needs to have all preeminence in all things. Listen, I see him as the pure judge. And then I see his eyes of fire and, the, and his feet of brass. I see him as the powerful judge, the powerful judge. Revelation chapter one, verse number 12, we see his eyes of fire. The Bible said in his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Jeremiah uh, chapter 17, verse number 10, the Bible said the Lord Search the, he said, I, the Lord, search the heart. I tried the reins, even to give, uh, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Proverbs chapter 15, verse number three. The Bible said, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And so, what we know, listen, as we begin to think about, uh, of the eyes of the Lord being as the flame of fire, how we can see that the Lord, how he looks and he tries the reins to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. We know that the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. Now listen, you might fool the preacher. Uh, you might fool uh, your neighbors. Uh, uh, you might fool those that you work with. Uh, uh, but we'll never fool God. And the Lord knows all. He sees all. And the Bible teaches us here how uh, many tries of the reins. Uh, uh, listen, that he tries the reins uh, even to give every man according to his ways uh, and according to the fruit of his feelings. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 13. And uh, the Bible said every man's work. Uh, I shall be made manifest for the day you shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Listen, I'm telling you this. Uh, and those of us that are saved by the good grace of God, uh, we're going to be tried uh, by our works of what sort they are. And I'm telling you that God Almighty, He doesn't miss a thing. The Lord Jesus Christ, He doesn't miss a thing. Uh, and He's watching all things that we do. And He knows why we do them. We see 
his powerful judgment. We see his powerful judgment in his eyes of fire, but also see his powerful judgment in his feet. Look with me in Revelation chapter 1, verse 15. The Bible said, in his feet, like a defined brass, as if they burned in a furnace. His feet are as fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Now, when we see brass in the Bible, what we see is judgment. Judgment. Ezekiel 22 and verse number 17, the Bible said, And the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to, uh, is to me become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead, and in the midst of the furnace they are even the dross of silver. Verse 19, the Bible said, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore I will gather you into uh, the midst of Jerusalem as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin in the midst of the furnace, and to blow the fire upon it, and to melt it. Uh, so, uh, so will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. He said, Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and you shall be melted in the midst thereof. And the silver is melted in the midst of the furnace. So shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. Now listen, what we find recorded here is, a uh, uh, listen, we find recorded here uh, the judgment of the house of Israel. Honey, let me tell you something in this day. We've got to the place uh, where we think that the Lord's judged Israel, uh, but now he's moved on from Israel, and he's working in our midst. Uh, and I'll tell you what, we live like we believe. Uh, we live like we believe, but he's not going to judge us uh, out of the way that he judged the house of Israel. We think that we're going to be able to go on living however we want to live and do what we want to do. Honey, I'm telling you, just like you judged the house of Israel, He's going to put the refiner's fire to us and to our works. Honey, let me tell you something we see is his feet of brass here and it pictures the judgment. And listen, I'm telling you, those feet are bringing judgment and the Lord is a bringing judgment to us. And if we're not careful, honey, we're going to find ourselves in an awful pitiful shape come judgment day. Come judgment day. Philippians chapter 2. Verse number five, the Bible said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And at that name, the Bible said, and at that name, and at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and under the earth. Listen, the Bible said in verse number 11, it said, and that, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. I'm telling you, just like you judge the nation of Israel, and he burned off their dross. And God Almighty, listen, it's going to burn up our works. And I'm telling you, we might try to convince man what sort our works of are of. Um, but you can bet one thing. I've got the powerful judge and the pure judge. He knows what sort, and he's going to reveal them by judgment. He's going to reveal them by judgment. Theodore Hepp made this statement. He said, he who was judged for the sins of man now is revealed as the rightful judge. He who was judged for the sins of man, he became a lamb. But he said, now, he said this about our passage. He said, but now is revealed as the rightful judge. 
what we see him here is the picture uh, that's being unveiled to the churches in Asia. Listen, may I say this? This may be what we might call the Lord Jesus Christ uh, epistles, just as Paul wrote epistles. Uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ has uh, Jesus Christ through John has penned some epistles uh, unto these seven churches. And what he's doing now is he's unveiling himself. Uh, unto these churches and he's been reason for doing so uh, because he wants them to understand about the judge uh, that's going to be doing the judging and listen he shows himself as a pure judge he shows himself as a pure judge listen in his uh, uh in his uh, uh garment and his girdle and his hair and then we see that he shows himself uh, as a powerful judge here and uh, listen in his uh, uh his eyes of fire and his feet of brass. Listen, I'm telling you, I bet the Lord is still uh, judging in this day. He's walking in the midst of the church. And then lastly, we'll see this. Uh, I will see that I see him as the perfect judge. We see him as the perfect judge. Now look at Revelation uh, chapter 1 and verse number 15. We're going to talk about here his, the, uh, his voice and his mouth and his countenance and the contents of his hand. And, but I want us to read the verses for both of those uh, so that we can kind of get an idea of what he's talking about. Revelation chapter 1, verse 15. The Bible is set at his feet, and like unto brass, as if they had burned in the furnace. Now look here. It said, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Verse 16. The Bible said, and, he's, and, and, and he had... I had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And so what we hear is his voice and his mouth. Now listen, we see that the Bible will tell us in other places, if you go back, I believe it's in uh, in Daniel chapter number seven, um, um, the Bible will talk to us uh, about um, uh, that is uh, like his uh, the voice as of a, a great multitude. Listen, but I'm telling you, it might be like a great multitude, uh, but it's not saying many things to us. Uh, but what it is saying, not many different things to us, uh, but what it is saying to us uh, uh, is very powerful as a great multitude. Listen, you say I don't see anything about uh, about the uh, how water. Can be powerful. Well, have you ever uh, have you ever seen the, how the difference water can make? Have you ever heard a great flowing waterfall? I'm listening. I'm telling you, water will knock you off your feet. And so what we see here, I was listening that voice uh, that comes to us as the sound of many waters. It's out of a mouth. And the Bible said, out of out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword. I don't think I have to give you much counsel on the fact that that sharp two edged sword. We know the Bible teaches is us. Listen, is the word of God. It's the word of God. Listen. Then he begins to talk to us about this. I want us to read it one more time. The Bible said, in his feet, like unto fine brass, as if burned in the furnace, and his voice has the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of the mouth out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Listen, we think about his countenance being as the sun shineth in the in his, in his strength. Listen, we know that uh, in Matthew chapter number 17, uh, boy, when they went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, I listened that his uh, countenance uh, uh, became so bright uh, how that those men that were with him there couldn't even look upon him. Listen, I'm telling you, it's a beautiful countenance. But look with me at verse number 16. Now, I want you to pay attention to the punctuation here in verse number 16. Two different times we find a colon in this sentence in in uh, in uh, verse number 16. Now, that colon might carry the thought to, uh, to dig a little deeper for more is to follow. Now, look with me again. It said, and in his right hand, seven stars. Now, we know that that's the seven stars, which are the angels or the messengers uh, to those seven churches. And so he's got that in his right hand. And then it tells us to dig a little deeper. It said, and out of his mouth, with a sharp two-edged sword. 
So you've got in his hand uh, the, the, uh, the, the angels in that place of authority in his right hand. That's what that right hand is. That's the place of authority. And he's got those angels to those seven churches in that right hand. And then he tells us to go a little deeper and see that out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And so the word of God comes along out of his mouth. And then it says, go a little deeper. And it said in his countenance was as the sun shineth. I'm telling you what he's portraying himself as here in this place of judgment of the one that walks in the midst of those seven candlesticks and has those seven stars in his right hand. Is he showing us a judge? I listen, they're passing a message from the word of God along to the leadership of the play in the place of authority to pass along to the churches. And it's the word of God. And if we'll go on from there and and we'll keep his word. It said in his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. Honey, I'm telling you this. If we'll take the Lord in his place and in his place of authority. And we'll pass the right message and come into a place that pleases God. What we'll see is that that comes from the word of God. And what will happen is he'll be glorified. He'll be glorified. Listen, that's what it's all about. Is him being glorified. But what we find all through the Bible is in order to glorify him, listen, he's unveiled himself so that, listen, so that he might uh, be able to give us the redemption which brings glory to him. It brings glory to him. We see him here as a priestly judge. We see his, we see his pure judgment. We see his powerful judgment. We see his perfect judgment. Would you say, what does that have to do with these seven churches? Well, we see him walking in the midst of those seven candlesticks with those seven angels in his hand. And he shows us this picture of himself as the priestly judge. Now that one walking in the midst, that's a picture of the priestly judge. He's not to be confused or mistaken with the, with the judge of Revelation uh, chapter number 20, of Revelation chapter 20, where we see him as the kingly judge. What we see here is he's walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks, but in Revelation 20 as the kingly judge, he's seated upon the throne. You say, well, what's the difference? i tell you what the difference is. The kingly judge carries out punitive justice. Punitive justice. Listen, once he's been rejected to that point, there's no more way to turn back. Listen, there'll be only eternal punishment after Revelation chapter number 20 once you've been to that, uh, received that justice. But what I'm telling you is in this place of priestly, uh, uh, the priestly judgment, he cares about productive judgment. Listen, he's telling us, uh, he's telling these seven churches and judging them according to some things. And he writes letters or epistles to each one of these churches that we can study and we can learn some things and put them into practice in order to be more pleasing to him, in order to be more pleasing to him. What we'll notice is that the unveiling of the Savior to these seven churches as we began to study them always matches the moral condition of that assembly. The, the unveiling of the Savior as presented to each of these churches always matches the uh, moral condition of that church. So I'll read these off. You can write them down real quick, and then we'll be done for tonight. What we see at Ephesus is we see a directive of devotion. Revelation uh, 2 and verses 1 and verse 5, we see a directive of devotion. He deals with them about who they're devoted to. Then we see in Smyrna, a directive in doubt and discouragement. That's Revelation 2, verse 8, verse 10, and verse 11. In Smyrna, you had much persecution. And there was doubt and discouragement there. And so he gives them a directive or a command about that doubt and discouragement. Then we see in Perg uh, Pergamos, we see a directive of doctrine. There was much false doctrine in their midst. And so he deals with them gives them a directive or a command about this false doctrine. 
Then we see in Thyatira the directive over their deeds. The directive over their deeds. Our deeds do matter when it comes to judgment. How we live does matter when it comes to judgment. That's Revelation uh, chapter 2, verse 18, verse 23. Then we see uh, Sardis. In Sardis, we see a directive about their dread. Listen, they had uh, got to a place where, well, they almost dreaded doing anything for God. He deals with them about that. Revelation 3 and verses 1 and 3. And they were they were dead. And they had a name that they were alive, but the Bible said Sardis was dead. And then in Philadelphia, the, the, he deals with them about the directive of a deceptive. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7 through 9. And what we see there is they had a, a bunch of folks who say them they were somebody that they were not. And uh, he deals, uh, gives a directive uh, of the uh, of the deceptive gives commandment to how to deal with that how he's going to deal with that deceptive then in Laodicea uh, the directive about disregard Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 through 16 and we see that he deals with them about, uh, gives them a directive or a command about this disregard they were disregarding the Savior they wanted to do things the way they wanted to do them and uh, listen um, the Lord and does a work in our midst. He's unveiled himself to these seven churches, and he's in, he's going to use his unveiling to these seven churches uh, to unveil himself to us. And so let's be uh, studying these seven churches. And of course, uh, we gave out a study guide uh, this past week, a study guide one, uh, for you to look at um, uh, how he portrayed himself or unveiled himself. Uh, and uh, I want to try to get a uh, try to get a uh, a uh, way uh, forum if uh, some type on our web page so we can communicate back and forth uh, about what we've studied. Um, but listen, these verses are rich, and we can learn some things about pleasing the Lord. If we learn some things about how the Lord uh, shows Himself, then we can learn to please Him, and we can live a life that is worth living for His honor and His glory. If not, we'll just fit right in with that layer to see in church, and it'll be about us. And church will become what we think church ought to be instead of what brings glory to him. We want to bring glory to him. And so I feel like it was a jumbled up mess tonight, but I appreciate you uh, tuning in, and maybe you got some help. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. God, we thank you for a privilege now to be gathered, Lord, here around the Word of God. I thank you for these that, Lord, that uh, studied along with us tonight, and Lord, those that maybe study along in the days ahead. And I pray, God, that we'd not just stop here, but it'd just be a, a place. We know it's not exhaustive, and we've not exhausted your unveiling. And I pray, God, it'd be just enough for us to get a taste to get hungry, uh, to study and to learn more about you. God, we want our church to be a place where we grow, God, and where folks uh, get a hunger for the word of God and put that to practice in our life. Now, Lord, you said, blessed is he that readeth and they which hear. But Lord, you said that we'd have to put it to work in our lives. And so I pray now, God, that we'd study the revelation and in such a way, in these seven, uh, your message to these seven churches, in such a way that we might put them to practice in our life and not just be talking and, and studying, but we might put them to practice in our life to bring honor and glory to you. Help us now, we do pray in Christ's name. Amen.